Hey folks, welcome back. Well, if you have your um, blower motor that doesn't work when you uh, select your your um, climate control to the heat mode um, on a Ford Lincoln Mercury car with um, automatic uh, climate control. I'm not sure if the manuals will have this or not, but it should be in some, you know, the Mercury Grand Marquis and some Thunderbirds or something like that. This happens to be a 1979 Lincoln Continental Town Car, and um, it's a common thing to have go on. Um, there's two reasons. Well, there's two main things of, of why it does what it does. Um, one is it's designed that way, and I'm going to explain to you why it's designed that way, but I also can't explain to you why it's designed that way. <laughs> if that makes any sense that might make a little bit of sense later on uh two is is basically the system's not working correctly um and so we're gonna go through uh you know what it's doing and all that kind of stuff um and you know what you can do to you know either bypass it and or fix it so let's keep on going then all right so this is what we're talking about here so we got Lower motor set on high. So you go here to economy vent, lower comes on, you got your main AC, you got high and low, heat, no blower. Then you got your heat bet between your heat and floor, or defrost and floor, defrost and heat. You know, now it's there and there. Uh, lower motor's back, and it works in the defrost where it's defrost only. No blower. Okay. So, quick overview here. What it has to do with is uh, this particular switch right here. This relay. This vacuum. This is. This is called an EVR, electric vacuum relay. Right here, so we've got a couple vacuum lines going here. Um, this essentially, what this vacuum portion of this switch does is it controls the air re recirculation door, which on mine, I have disabled because um, I just don't want this open or to recirculate the air. Because right now in the closed position, it's allowing only the outside air to come in. My AC system cools all down to 30, 32 degrees uh, with this this closed, letting the outside air in on a 95 degree day. I do not want this to recirculate air from inside the cabin because I don't need it colder, any colder than that. Um, and so, and basically this switch right here is operating this recirculation door in your AC position here and for some odd reason your heat position here I don't know why and we're gonna get into that a little bit like I said I know why it's designed this way but I don't know why it's designed this way um, I know what they're what they're wanting to do I just don't know why but anyways we're gonna talk about this um, and I'll show you a vacuum schematic and electrical schematic, show you what's going on here and what you can possibly do to uh, fix your system um, if uh, yours isn't working right. Okay, so what this system does is it's got an automatic temperature control. So you move this thing over here to 75 degrees. Say you start the car up and it's 90 degrees inside of the car here you flip your AC on um, you know what it's gonna do is it's gonna move the there this is cable controlled to a valve in here which senses your cabin pressure or cabin temperature up through here it's hard now, I've got other videos showing that particular system that's not what this video has to do about but I have, I'll link them at down in the description because we when I first uh, got this car this was uh, stuck on hot it blow hot all the time no matter what and it had that valve up here vacuum uh, valve it's got a control lever on it and it's this that and the other but check those videos out if that's what you're chasing after um, 
it got going on there. So anyways, um, so what it's going to do is based on the temperature of the cabin, it's going to move the blend door back and forth as it needs to, to try to maintain 75 degrees. So that's, I mean, essentially that's what exactly what that's doing. Um, you know, this is not just, you know, if it's, if it's too hot for you or something like that, you know, you just, you basically just set it at your temperature and, and leave it. That's, that's what automatic temperature control is supposed to be versus, you know, the old style where you would just move this, you know, and then it's like, oh, it's getting too warm in here. Eh, let's back it off a little bit. That's, you know, you don't, you can run it that way, but you don't really have to. So anyhow, that's what that's doing. All right. So why does your blower motor not work uh, in the heat, in the heat mode only? Well, for one, it's designed that way, and the car's got to get warmed up before um, it allows to uh, have that blower motor come on um, at about 115 degrees, you know, and it's based on your coolant temperature up by the thermostat-ish area. Um, why it does that, I don't know, but here's where it's talking about. In cold weather, delay in system operation until engine coolant has warmed up enough to, to minimize the discharge of cold air from the heater outlet. But I, but if you turn it on to uh, your defroster and floor, well then it kicks the AC compressor on, and you got colder air coming out. So I don't, really don't know why it's designed to do that, you know, only in the in the heat function or whatnot. But it is. Um, so let's have a look, see at the uh, the electrical schematic diagram of this. This here is our EVR, electric vacuum relay, right here. So, what we have here is we've got those two orange wires on this side, and then what we've got here is we've got a dark blue and a light green, a uh, dark blue with a light green tracer on it, and then we've got a yellow with a white tracer wire right here. We've got a water temperature uh, sender switch here. Um, and you can see this is a normally closed switch because this opens at 115 degrees. So when this is open, there's no ground. You can see there's a ground here. I don't know what this is exactly doing here, um, but there's a ground right here. So when this is open, there's no ground. So this switch is allowing you to get uh, power from here through it down here to your blower switch slash resistor there's your blower motor and all that so anyways you can see in this deal right here they they got these two funk you know showing two different things here so uh in any of of the settings right here you've got power being able to come from your number six fuse 30 amp right here and so any particular function, we've got vent, we've got panel, we've got high and low floor defrost, all of these can allow power to come out and then go into another portion of the kind of the same thing, vent, panel, high, low floor, except see what's happening in floor right here. See so you selected floor, see so you selected floor here, power can get through here, but power cannot get through here to go out of here, which would in turn go straight into this blower switch right here. But you can, you can see vent is connected, panels connected, high low is connected, floor is not, and defrost is connected. So what happens in floor? Well, you only have power going through here, through this uh, electric relay right here, all the way through here. So on a cold engine, this thing is closed and allowing this switch to open so you've got no power being able to get over here to your blower motor until your engine warms up to 115 degrees hence in the floor selection right here that would allow your power to go through there like that so that's that's why it's doing what it's doing um, or what it's doing again I don't know exactly why um, but what else we're doing here is we've got these vacuum lines on here so let's go back to the vacuum diagram here. So we've got these two lines right here, your turquoise and your black. So what that's doing is in your, uh, you know, right now we've got your, your uh, vent and then your panel. You can see we've got 
vacuum supplied onto this side of the valve here, but when you click your uh, setting into floor, we now complete the vacuum circuit to supply vacuum to your outside air vacuum motor, which will open that in floor mode and in your high AC mode for maximum cooling. Why do they do it on the floor heating? I really don't know. And it's only doing it um, when you're set, I really, I, maybe for maximum heat, I guess, because you recirculate, that's gotta be the only thing I could think of, but it doesn't, want to, it doesn't want it to do it while it's less than 115 degrees. So that's what it's doing. Um, hopefully that you understand a little bit about that. You know, obviously, you know, this, um, uh, is all your vacuum, you know, going to each and every actuator and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, um, this book right here, I got from these guys here a couple, two, three years ago. Um, this would have been like, I think if you would have been a service tech at a Ford dealership and you went to a training class on climate control for Ford, Lincoln, Mercury cars, pickups or vans, I don't know, whatever else has automatic climate control, probably just the cars. Um, <coughs> this is what they would have given you, you know, for you to take and all that kind of stuff. It's a pretty cool book. Um, you know, in the past, in the other videos that I'll link down in the description, um, when we troubleshot and the, uh, hot and cold function uh, with uh, this valve right here, which just said it's cable controlled and all that. We fixed that because we had a bad valve. Um, you know, we did some other sort of troubleshooting and all that kind of stuff with this. So anyways, um, I'm gonna show you the wiring, show you how you can bypass uh, the, um, um, the also your heater function works all the time. Like I said, I've got my motor or the, the actuator unplugged the recirculation door, so it's closed all the time for outside air coming all the way in because um, I like it that way. And then, um, you know, we don't need this particular function. I can I want to be able to just turn the heater on if I need to, if I don't need the defrost because I don't want the AC compressor to kick on if I want just heat on a low setting or whatever, you know, that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to show you that and then, um, you know, I'll show you where I found this uh, switch right here. So this water temperature switch, I've located that on this car. Could be different in various different years. This happens to have a 400 uh, V8. So if you got a 460, it could be in a different location. Like if you had a 78 or older. Um, so anyways, yeah, let's just keep on going. Okay, so if you take this off um unplug it there's two tabs like this you just lift lift these up and unplug it okay so you've got that and then i've got this jumper wire made here with um male spades um because it's got female style spades in here if you're aware of how the male female reproductive system works this goes in there <laughs> All right, so what we're doing is we're jumpering this orange wire to this blue wire right here. This blue to this orange, just like that. And then I'm just gonna tape this up, tuck it up inside of there. There, yeah, just like that. So basically now, you know, the um, heater's, or the blower motor's gonna work. On every function now regardless of the temperature and the only thing that's disabled now is that recirculation door which I had it I had the line pulled off anyways and plugged off before I didn't want it want it to um, operate so. all right so it's gonna be a little hard to see but there's the plug for it right through here. Let's see if I can get a good, good shot of it. 
There it is. See the hex and then the plug and wire and all that. There's your coolant temp switch right there, right straight into the block. Um, so anyways, hopefully that helps you out as far as, you know, you got to make sure if that switch is doing its job, make sure the wiring is good over to the switch that's uh, the relay that's underneath the dash we looked at. Make sure you got power there. I mean, there's all kinds of different things, you know, and just follow that schematic um, to be able to figure out, you know, what it's, what you got going on. But if your blower motor doesn't work, it's the electrical side of that vacuum relay. The uh, vacuum portion only does the uh, air re recirculation door. So if you're not having or not noticing any issues with that, or maybe you don't even know, I don't know. But if your blower motor's not working, it's probably something to do with either this switch or the relay itself in there. Um, and you can just, you know, like I said, you can either bypass it or I've did a quick Google search trying to locate that switch. I didn't find it on a quick Google search. Um, didn't look up this switch here, but these are pretty much, you can, you know, you can buy any type of a switch, you know, that would fit the threads or, you know, use a bushing or something like that. All it's really doing is it's just, you need a switch that, um, you know, opens at the higher temperatures to make the system work like it's supposed to. Um, so anyways, yeah, so hopefully this helps you out some with that. Next video, we're gonna replace the thermostat and then I'm also going to um, uh, install a water temperature gauge. So look out for that. Anyways, thanks for watching.